Thank you, band. Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited to be here. And let me say a very big thank you to Prophet Brian and the IS team for doing me the honors and inviting me to speak to the youth of Ghana. This is something I love to do. And so you can imagine how I feel that I have the platform to speak to you. And thanks so much for turning up. Thanks so much. Yesterday I had my board meeting, so I couldn't join. But right after the meeting, I went straight to Facebook. So I enjoyed everything you enjoyed. Don't think you, you got everything alone. I was there enjoying with you. I salute all the pastors in the house. Thank you so much for your prayers and your support. Last year, I was supposed to have joined you in person. And then because of COVID, we had to do the virtual session. And I remember talking to you about future of work, skills, and it was ish. Where are we going with this, you know? And we are here again today, and things haven't changed. It's gotten even more disruptive than we spoke last year. I just want to establish a few, a few basic things about me so that you stop looking at me like the Vodafone CEO and start looking at me like just a daughter of grace, somebody who has just been touched by God, God has just decided to choose and use. I'm as regular and as ordinary as everyone. I grew up in Latabi Okosh, here in Ghana, and I schooled in Ghana. Um, I went to Bishop Bauer School, I went to St. Rose's, I went to Aquitia, um, St. Rose's in Aquitia, and I went to Presec, and after that I went to KNUST. So born, bred, schooled here. The other opportunities that I had internationally was eventually as I started working. My father died when I was 13 years old, so I was really raised by my mother. Um, on my mother's side, we are four girls. I'm a twin, so the three others. And then on my father's side, don't be shocked, we are 20 children. Yeah, and <laughs> so if you think that I come from some big inheritance, I don't. The only things my parents gave me was God and education, that's it. God and education. And so if you see me standing here today, I shamelessly, shamelessly always say that it's just the grace of God. And I depend on God shamelessly. I remember every time I'm having to go and prepare and speak somewhere, my son will say, stop fretting, you're just going to cheat with the Holy Spirit. Because by the time you get there, you come back and you're like, oh, it went well. So why were you freaking out? The Holy Spirit will be following you anyway. So I stand here today. And I believe the Holy Spirit is with me to speak to you what he wants me to speak to you. Amen. We're talking about career, the journey, and this uncertain world in which we are. And the pandemic has made it even worse. I know people sometimes think that the world is changing because of the pandemic. Actually, it's not. The disruption has already started. And if you don't take care, You'll be pursuing a career, you'll be pursuing a, a, a degree, and by the time you are done in five years' time, that career, that degree is actually not so helpful, not so useful, because the world has moved on. And if I look at the subject combinations that people are taking in schools, some schools have caught the wave, and so they, are, they have stopped insisting the students take physics, chemistry, math. They are allowing them to take, for example, math, physics, and geography or they are doing ICT, economics, and, and something. And it is because of the way the disruptions are happening. So if you are pursuing a certain program, I beg you to please start understanding the changes that are happening just in the area, the scope of area you have decided to build a career around. You know, usually you start with a job. You get a job and you get paid. It doesn't mean it's something you like. You just fall into it, right? But with the career, you realize that as you go along the job, you begin to love what you do. You begin to enjoy it. And then you carry on for a longer part of your life. And sometimes it's progressive. You start growing into it. So when you are doing something and you don't find the love for it, this is one thing I say to the youth all the time. I always tell you don't be selfish. But when it comes to your career, it is the only thing you have to be selfish about because it's about you. And it's about your fulfillment. 
the reason why God created you was not to come and live and die. Human beings are not created to survive. We are created to thrive. Even flowers, they have good sense. You don't come into this world and pass and go. So the reason why God is taking you on the journey he's taking you, the wavy journey he's taking you, is that he has a top for you to get to. And sometimes we are impatient to go through the mill and get to that top. But I pray that as we go through some of the things I'll talk to you about, this thing called career, we're going to have a better ending than we started. Are we good? Are we good? So this is how mine started. In fact, <laughs> I don't know if I've said this to my team before. I did two internships before I actually started. In fact, three. The first one was at the roadside at Latibiokoshi. So I, I enjoy fixing stuff like bulbs and things like that. Don't look at me as like some queer girl. And so I went to sit by this guy. That was my internship. And because I didn't know anyone to take me to any company. And we're repairing, they repair amplifiers and those things. And I was seeing resistors and capacitors and inductors and things like that. The next time, the lecturers were on strike. And there was a company down our road. So I walked there and I said, um, my lectures are on strike, can I do something? They said, okay, come and do stock management. So I sat there, and when the construction workers come, I give them the items. Then that's, I learned a lot about iron rod sizes and those things. I know it, you don't know it. Because I, I just put my time into doing that as my intention. And then my third one is then my now husband, then school boyfriend, don't shout, their school boyfriend, his roommates knew somebody in the company, um, and that was Tigo, and he held my hand into the company and said, she wants to do her internship. That was um, my, sec my end of first year. Went through my internship. Every vacation, I didn't even have the money to travel anyway, so every vacation I would go there. And I started from monitoring alarms into operations, and then by national service, I was doing planning, and it was through planning, network design, the, what type of antennas should put on the poles, what the height of the pole should be, all those intriguing things, what frequencies to use. It's when I realized that actually this is what I love. So my first point to you though, and after that I have stayed in this for 24 years. Doreen Nando would tell you of Joy FM, she says, when the lecturers went on strike, she wanted to do pharmacy. And then she decided, okay, they're on strike. Let me go into, somebody invited them to radio. For the rest of her life, she stayed in radio. So sometimes you walk into it because you just need a job. And sometimes by divine accidents, we call it, you also get into something and you realize that you love. The difference between a job and a career is that one of it, you begin to love it. And sometimes it doesn't even pay well, but you begin, you believe that you are there to fulfill something and you are there for a reason. The reason why God makes you love it is because there's a purpose behind that job. You are not there to make money and leave. We don't come to, 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 to the world to earn money, eat and go. No. We come to fulfill a purpose. We come to fulfill a purpose. So if you're choosing a career, you're following a path. The reason why God took me through the journey of electrical engineering, because sometimes you don't even know what you want. And that is why I took all those opportunities that came my way. And even when I started my internships and my national service, I wasn't choosy about which function they should put me in. It is in doing some of these things that you start to eliminate the things you don't like. You know yourself. So you know that's me. Banking is not for me. Ah, uh, no. Accounting is not for me. You can start eliminating as you try. But there are some people who can sit home for a year. I got this job, but I don't like it. It's not for me. Hey, take it. Go and build some expertise, and when you, as you try your hands at things, you will discover, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you will start discovering that thing that is for you. So start with what you find. It is very important. The second thing I have realized in building the career is that we are leaving gaps on our CVs. Young people of Ghana and the people listening to me outside this hall, don't leave gaps on your CV. What did I say? Don't leave gaps on your CV. When you are done with school, 
fill every single space of your CV with something. Oh, you say um, it's because we don't have a job. I'm not saying you should fill it with a job. Even if it's a side hustle that you have to do, go for it. You know why? Because when you go for that next job interview in a corporate organization, I do it. I look, I look through people's CVs every time, and I look to answer the question, why the gap? Yes, you didn't get a job after school, but you all have phones. There are many, even if you finish learning Excel and became a professional in Excel, I will find somewhere for you, I'm sure. But you left the gap open, sleep, wake up one year, no, a boy, one year. On year, Jumanji will feel. And I said, what are you doing with the time whilst you're waiting to get that job? When you go to look for a job, everybody has a degree. When I, went, I, went, I had the opportunity of going to Mauritius, and I got this taxi driver, I spent every time he picked me to the office. He said, Madam, everybody has a degree, and I have an MBA, and I'm driving a taxi. If everybody has a degree and an MBA, and you go for an interview, 100 applications, why should they choose you? So whilst you are waiting to get the job, we are talking about building a career, right? Whilst you are waiting to get the job, please do something with the time. Even if you learn how to bake, you know how to sell. When you go and you write it on your CV, you write negotiating skills. Because the woman who comes to buy is you turn off you. And that's you know how to do the negotiations. Like, no, it's 10 cities, it's 5 cities. You are building communication skills when you stand behind the counter. And you encounter different people with different attitudes. When you go online, I was, I was reading about the different types of jobs that have come up that we don't even find attractive, but make a lot of money whilst you are waiting to find this magical career. One of them is owning your own YouTube channel. What does it take to own a YouTube channel? A smartphone and content. Say, I don't have a job. I don't have a job. People are recruiting you to review websites. They build the websites and they are looking for website reviewers to give them your opinion as a consumer. You say, I don't have a job. The simple courses are online. Just take the course. By the time you sit in the interview in that company, that's what the phone you are looking for. You tell them you're a website reviewer. Different from the guy who came to you and said, I also have a first degree. You are beating him to it. Social media managers. Social media account managers. Why are you not managing the accounts of people? A lot of people, senior people want to have profiles on social media because it's, it's kind of funky, but they don't have time. You are on Instagram, Clubhouse, Facebook, which one is that? Snapchat. You're everywhere. You're smart already. You didn't go for any course to do it. And you can't manage people's accounts of them and make money and put it on your profile as your social media manager. Blogging. You can write a whole page of insults of anything, but you can't blog. Write and write and write until people feel like people read this voice content and company wants to place their ad on your blogs. What are you waiting for? The world has moved on. The long-term career where we sit and we wait and we wait and we wait till we build the career, those times have passed. Careers are going to be short, 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 and people will be moving on and things will be changing. So let's start at that thing. No living on gaps on your CV. Do I have your commitment? Do I have your commitment? And when you get that job, stay and perfect your craft. I told my son that money is not everything. You know what he told me? Hey, mommy, wait, let me also make the money. And then I can decide for myself that money is not everything. But it's true. Money is not everything. At the beginning of that career journey, please, please, please stop. Please stop. Let me hold still another face. You're welcome. At the beginning of that career, please make time to build the fundamentals and understand your industry. People come for interviews. He says he's worked in a certain industry. You ask him very basic questions about the place. Oh, I used to be an accountant here. I'm... You ask him very basic changes in the accounting profession. He doesn't know. Please build some understanding. It's not about classroom. Your personal understanding of what is changing in the industry, in the career path that you said you have chosen. It is very important. Otherwise, you'll be outdated. You don't know. And when you go and they ask you basic things about the new technologies that are in HR, 
you are going to present yourself as, I am good with recruitment. Companies are using technology to do recruitment, so don't go and tell them that you have gone to school and you are good with reviewing CVs. They have me, both of them. We have, a, we have a, a, a tool that we use to profile CVs. Nobody sees to review CVs. In fact, if you bring your CV and leave it at a reception, you're wasting your time. It has to go online. You have to register, get a profile online, and the robots will go through your CV. Even how to write, that's a conversation for another day. Please understand the changes that are happening in the industry, in the professions that you say you are choosing and building a career around so that you don't end up becoming outdated. And when people are interviewing you, please take note of this. I'm sharing these things with you because they have helped me. They will not interview you for your current role. So Patricia, going for the job of a CEO, I had moved from a technology director in Tigo. I had been technology director in Vodafone. I had decided to move into commercial roles. And then I went for the interview as CEO. And I was I expecting them to ask me some of the number of base stations that I built or what I did in technology. It was not relevant. It was useful for the CEO role, but not relevant. You know the questions they were asking me? How are you going to manage your stakeholders? Government has 30% in your business. Have I managed government before? Okay. Why are they asking me? You are interviewing for the CEO role. So you have to prepare for the role. This is why I'm telling you that when you say you are building a career and progressing, whilst you are on that job, prepare for the next. Career is about progression. Prepare for the next whilst you are in the job. You have already gotten the job as the marketing officer. Now you are moving to marketing supervisor. When you step into that role, impress your boss, but start preparing for the next. Start preparing for the next. Your preparation must meet the opportunity. When the role is up, you won't have time. You will not have time to prepare for it. So now that you have time, please invest, invest, invest. The last thing I want to share with you Take your chance when it comes. You know, you are in, a, probably you have started a business, you are in a job role, and it's now adding no value to you. After I had done 14 years in Tigo, there was nobody in the company whose name I didn't know. There was no part of the network that I couldn't close my eyes and tell you. I, I, I can tell you the size of cable, the size of generator. I mentioned the site, I'll tell you. After some time, you've done it all. After I moved to Vodafone and I did five years of technology, then what? How much value am I adding again? And how much am I getting? I'm telling you that when it's your career, you have to be selfish. It's about you. So how much value is the role adding to you? Because like I'm saying, God brought me here not to fade away. I have a mission. So if I'm in a role and I'm just doing it, get doing the job, I must know it is time to move on. And you must take your chances when it comes. Otherwise, you'll miss the opportunity. That is why you have to be self-aware. Know yourself. Know yourself very well so that when you get to the point where this role is becoming too basic for you, you have mastered it. My friend, time to find the next one. I'm mentoring a girl in the UK. The first time we had that session, she was in tatters. Serious. But she's done the role for so many years, and she's broken.